Hi everybody, so welcome to Bishopston Glen and it's a site of special scientific interest mostly for the wildlife and the geology. This area was actually under a shallow sea for ages and what you can see quite clearly when we looked at the top were the newer sands that have been laid down and it's clearly banded into grades of sand to get to the bottom where my feet are and that's the London clay belt. So this whole area is covered in clay. Now we can't take clay from here because it is a protected site and one of the reasons it's protected are these little holes here in the cliffs. They're actually bees, solitary bees. The bees come out and they paralyze the prey, drag it in there, lay some eggs, seal the hole up and it becomes a nursery and a tomb. So there's lots of strange animals and insects and plants here that make a protected site both in terms of the zoology and in terms of the geology. Of course we can't dig clay out of that, that's an area of special interest, but if we come down the beach a little bit, we come to these clay formations and the whole hills are made out of this stuff, it's quite dry because of the weather, and it changes its colour from that sort of reddish brown which has got lots of iron in it, to this kind of silvery grey which has got a lot more aluminium in it, and of course I'm being a little obsessive about clay right now because I'm always obsessive about the things that we can pull from nature. This exact area is where I come to collect bits and pieces in order to make solar cells. What we can do is collect the bits and pieces that we need in order to make a battery. Because there are lots of different kinds of clay. You get brick red clay, tile red clay, London yellow clay, porcelain clay, china clay. Just a whole range of different types of clay that you can literally dig from the ground and this is the same stuff, this is just a type of clay, it's called zeolite and you come across this mostly in face masks and, and uh, filter material for fish ponds, that kind of thing. This grade is called X13. Now something really amazing happens when you add these two things together, this clay and this water. It happens quite a lot actually, it's usually not very dramatic so you don't notice it. And what it is, is that when they're separate like this, they have a higher energy. When you combine them, the energy is much lower and so that extra energy is given out as heat. And let's say when you're dissolving things, actually that happens, you just don't notice it. But when we add this to this, which doesn't dissolve it, the water goes into the galleries of the clay, that extra energy is super, super noticeable. Of course, the immediate question is, can we do something with that? And I was thinking about it because there are some awesome things you can do with it. One of the things you can do with it is you can take this as a Peltier device. Find these in beer chillers, that sort of thing. And it's really good for when you have a heat difference that is cold on one side and hot on the other side, it will generate an electric current between these two wires. So if we can get something hot, and something cold, we can automatically generate electricity from it. So, I've got one here, and I've got a little steel tin. Now, this steel tins are battered about and it's quite dented, so a thermal paste would work really well. I'm going to use a bit of graphite foil as a thermal contact. So, put the foil on there, put that on there, and we have a thermal contact. Now, I'm going to add my dry clay into my steel tin. There we go. And we're going to add some water to that. So this is just clay and water. So we add some water to it, it's going to get hot. You see it boiling the water immediately. I'm going to put that on, give it a bit of pressure so we get a good contact between the cold marble under here and the hot tin can. What I want you to do is keep your eye on that motor there. There we go. <laughs> here is that now has a hot side from the clay and a cold side from the marble. It's generating electricity and it's running that motor and it will continue to run that motor as long as there's a difference between the hot and the cold. And of course we've used clay and water. I can't repeat that often enough. It's clay that you dig out of the ground and water. So if we want to recharge this Dry off the water and you'll have clay <laughs> if you actually drop it. It'll do nothing because it's already ground. So to get it going you add 
water. <laughs> it's an amazing device if you think about it. It is a rechargeable battery made from the Earth's greatest, safest materials that will last forever and generate. So that really will run for ages until that cools down. So if I put that in a thermos, for example, it would maintain that heat difference. And so this would read even longer. This is just out in the air. So if you put it in a thermos, it would run even longer. The materials are cheap. They're abundant. They're renewable. They're uh, non-caustic. They're safe. I, I just can't think of anything else to recommend it. But anyway, have you enjoyed that video? Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.